In this video, we will learn how to solve an enthalpy practical worksheet. We will also see some virtual enthalpy readings so that we can learn fully how to solve the enthalpy worksheet for the practicals done. Then we'll be plotting also graph on the base of those virtual readings and then all, again I'll teach you how can we perform the calculations from the graph and the virtual readings further so here is one of the past paper question of the practical paper of an enthalpy so here it says that you are to determine the enthalpy change of the reaction between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide by adding various volumes of the acid and alkali and measuring the change in the temperature and here the concentration of the hydrochloric acid is given is 0 0.950 and Fe2 is aqueous sodium hydroxide. Now you can always pause the video and read the method. I won't read the method because it will take very long time and we won't take make such a long video. But uh, as I said, it's a virtual reading for you people. But for me, I had done the uh, experiment. I had done the practical and on the basis of that, I'll be giving you the reading. So you can rely on those readings and learn the further calculations. So here it says you need to measure the initial temperature of Fa1, Fa1 is 0 0.950 which you have taken in a beaker and the volume you have used for Fa1 is 25 centimeter cube. So for me it was 28 degrees Celsius the initial temperature of Fa1. Now the next few steps I'll read for you because that's important. It says that add 10 cm cube of Fa2 and 25 cm cube of water in a 100 cm cube of beaker and then add this mixture in the plastic cup and stir. Plastic cup means in which we have taken Fa1. Measure the maximum temperature reached and record this maximum temperature in the table below. Rinse the plastic cup and shake it to remove the excess water. Repeat the experiments using the volumes of Fa1, Fa2 and water shown in the table. So let's have a look at the table first now that here is the table and this is the volume of Fa1, Fa2 which we are going to use with the given volume of water and we'll be re uh, recording the maximum temperature for each of this mixture. So every time what you need to take care is that you are making the new solutions of these three Fa1, Fa2 and water mixture and record the temperature then wash away the cup rinse it with the water again right and then make the second solution as shown here then the third solution etc and keep on recording the temperature now the temperature i had calculated was 30 degrees for this mixture then it was 32 degrees it was 34 degrees next next was 35 again 35 and then again 35 that was the reading i had done i had measured when i was doing the experiment again i would suggest that pause the video and minutely look at the volumes which we have used for fa1 fa2 you can note down that fa1 volume we have kept constant so you can say that this is the volume which we are not changing but the volume of fa2 is being changed and the water volume is also being changed but you can note down that the total volume of fa2 and water is constant which is 35 centimeter cube every time so this is what is changing so that shows that what are you changing is the concentration of fa2 as you go down the volume of fa2 is increased so the concentration also increases as you go ahead with the experiments and readings now let's go ahead and read the next procedure it says that you're going to plot a graph 
using these results to find the volume of fe2 that gives the greatest maximum temperature and before you plot the graph choose two further volumes of fa2 that will allow you to find more precisely the volume that gives the greatest maximum temperature now here you need to understand that choose the volume of fa2 in such a way that it gives more precisely the volume of fa2 itself to give you the greatest maximum temperature now here you can see that the temperature increased till here and then from here to the next three readings it remained constant so somewhere in between these two readings that is the third reading and the fourth reading there should be some maximum temperature after which the temperature remained constant so you need to choose the next two readings here in such a way that we get that maximum temperature so now what you need to understand is that as fa1 remains constant we also will keep it constant now choose the two volumes of fa2 between these two volumes that is 20 and 25 so what i prefer is we can take 22 for the first one and 24 for the next one now as we know that the volume of total volume should remain 35 so we will choose water accordingly so if volume of fa2 is 22 then the water should be 13 centimeter cube and if the volume of fa2 is 24 then the volume of water is 11 centimeter cube and this is how we are going to repeat our next two experiments to find out the maximum recorded temperature and when I found it was 34.5 and the next was again 35. Now based on these readings we are going to plot a graph. So now let's go ahead and have a look at the grid of the graph. But as you can see here on the grid below plot the maximum temperature on the y axis against the volume of fa2 on x axis so if we have a look what is the volume of fa2 varying is from 10 centimeter cube to maximum of 35 centimeter cube and the temperature varies at zero volume was 28 and then it goes to maximum of 25 so we'll choose our scale on the grid in such a way that we need to remember that the label the grid should be selected in such a way the scale should be selected in such a way that it occupies more than half the grid more than half the grid so that our plotting is valid otherwise you won't be graded for it properly so this is what you need to be careful about that select your scale in such a way that it occupies more than half of your grid now here the grid is so big that you it can be seen on the screen fully so i'll make it little smaller for you so now your grid is smaller and again i am pausing the video so that i can draw the scaling which won't waste our time okay here is our full grid ready with the proper scaling and you can see that the whole grid which you can see is occupied more than half in fact on the x-axis it is almost fully covered and y-axis also almost fully covered with little part left on the top of the grid now if you have a look then zero volume of fa2 our reading was 28 initially so i'm drawing a cross on 28 i'm using a red ink because to show you very clearly but you need to do it in black pencil with crosses small crosses the plot should be the points should be plotted with small crosses now here with the volume of fa2 10 our reading was 30 degrees so again I'm posing and I'm plotting all the points now here according to the readings we have obtained I've already plotted the points and you can always scroll back 
to see what were our readings. So according to the readings, I've plotted the graph. Now you need to draw a best fit line from all these points to get the two straight lines. Now let me read the question again once. What are they trying to show you? Draw two straight lines. Can you read here down that it says draw two straight lines of the best fit on your graph and want to show where the temperature was increasing and other after the greatest maximum temperature had been reached using your graph and initial temperature recorded in A. Determine the maximum temperature change. Now that will be doing later. Let's first draw the best fit line first two best fit lines from this points now here are the two best fit lines i have drawn now looking at the best fit line i'll explain you how have i chosen these lines the line here you can understand it's all passing from the three points but the second line you can see that i have chosen the line in such a way that one point is little below the line and the second point is little above the line and then the three points are almost on the line so this is how i select the best fit line in such a way that it passes from middle of the all the points if they are not on the line then equal number of points should be above and below the line now from these two intersecting lines we are supposed to select the maximum temperature now here from the intersecting line we can find out that the maximum temperature is 35 degrees celsius and so our next question was related to that and which asked that what's the maximum temperature change so change means the change in the temperature so 35 minus 28 should be done which was our initial temperature to get the maximum temperature change so maximum temperature change is 7 degrees celsius and that is what is important here many a times students may learners may get confused and directly write 35 degrees as the temperature here but the important part is its temperature change so initial minus the maximum temperature where the initial temperature was 28 degrees celsius and so the temperature changes 7 degrees celsius now let's go ahead and have a look at some simple calculations the further question, sub question says that calculate the energy needed to produce the temperature change in B3. Assume that 4.3 joules of heat energy changes the temperature of 1 centimeter cube of solution by 1 degree. So that is the specific heat which we are supposed to use. So our question is that is energy change. So energy change if we symbol it by Q, the formula is minus M c delta t now what is the m that's the mass of the water or the total solution we have used now what's the total solution fa1 taken was 25 and the total volume of fa2 and water was 35 so our mass is actually 60 gram because it was 60 centimeter cube now by default the volume is taken as the mass assuming that one centimeter cube is equal to one gram so if we substitute that value is minus m is 60 specific heat is 4.3 and our temperature change was 7 degrees and we always have to do final minus initial so that we get the correct sign and as the temperature had increased our answer should be in negative so our answer is equal to minus 1806 joules so minus 1806 joules the sign is very necessary so don't ignore the sign now the next equation is calculate the number of moles of hcl used in experiment each experiment now to calculate the number of moles we have the formula concentration into volume now what was the concentration used for hcl if you'll go back 
we knew that it's given in the equation the concentration was 0 0.950 moles per dm cube and the volume used for hcl was 25 centimeter cube which we need to change it into dm cube so i'm multiplying it by 10 power minus 3 and so our answer is 2.38 into 10 power minus 2 moles which we'll be writing here 2.38 into 10 power minus 2 and you can note down that here i have used three significant figures so 2.38 into 10 power minus 2 are the moles used for hcl in each experiment now let's go ahead and see what's the next equation which is now the last sub question and it says that calculate the enthalpy change in kilojoules per mole when one mole of hcl reacts with NaOH now what we need to do is simply divide the energy in joules by the moles but here it says kilojoules so we need to multiply these joules change these joules into kilojoules so we are using calculate the enthalpy change so delta h is equal to minus 1806 into 10 power minus 3 so answer is actually 1.806 but i am not specifying it here divided by the moles that is 2.38 into 10 power minus 2 and so our answer is equal to minus 75.9 kilojoules per mole now as we have divided it by moles we have got the answer per mole and we used joules in changed joules into kilojoules by multiplying it by 10 power minus 3 so our answer is now in kilojoules so if we write it final the sign is negative and 75 point nine kilojoules per mole so this is how you're going to perform the enthalpy calculations enthalpy calculations will remain same in the last sub question calculation part you need to first calculate the energy in joules as we have shown here by using the same formula every time Calculate the moles from the data given in the question and then divide both these values that is the energy divided by moles and also divided by 1000 to change it into kilojoules and so your answer finally will be kilojoules per mole. So this is how you're going to perform the enthalpy practicals further then following by the calculations, the readings, plotting of graph and all. I hope this video will be very very useful to you.